The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. For Real Agriculture, I'm Kelvin Hepner, and on this episode of the Soybean School, we're pleased to welcome Jason Vogt of uh, Field to Field Agronomy and Jeanette Goche of BASF, and we're talking soybean planting timing. In uh, Western Canada, we've traditionally planted soybeans after canola, but uh, there's some rethinking of, uh, of that process happening, especially that 10 degrees Celsius threshold for, for planting that going back to the early days of soybeans in the prairies. That was the, the timing that we waited for when the soil warmed up to 10 degrees Celsius. Jason, why don't we start with you. What have we learned over the years when it comes to that threshold and, and timing of putting soybeans in the ground? Yeah, so Calvin, in the past, what we've noticed is that that 10 degree was a good starting point. But over time, with the different farmland conditions we've ran into in springs, we found that soybeans are actually a lot more tolerant to cooler soil temperatures. So that number's kind of been more or less manipulated down to about 8 degrees. Um, And I think also, not just uh, anecdotal information from our growers finding that out, but also through a lot of the research research that's been done by the Pulse Growers here in Manitoba, as well as Old Mafra in Ontario, um, the critical thing, though, is we still want to make sure the soil is fit. Even if we are, let's say, cheating a bit to those lower soil temperatures, we still want to make sure that those temperatures are rising. In the next few days, we're not going to be faced with a uh, you know, cold weather event, rain, rain or snow event, and that that first 24 to 48 hours of water that's imbibing into that seed is still, still warm mm-hmm. for that soybean to get going. Yeah. You look at you mentioned some of the data. You look at even crop insurance data. It shows even though our crop insurance deadline for soybeans is is later in the planting season, it still shows quite the downtrend from those first couple of weeks of May. Yeah, exactly. Actually, it was one of the Pulse Grower's recent uh, Pulse Pulse, data, Pulse piece, Beat yeah. that uh, showed uh, mass data from 20, 2007, I think, to 2021, and it showed anywhere from 109 percent down to um, 101 percent for those first three weeks of May. So basically your optimum soybean yield potential was achieved in those first couple, two or three weeks of May and then dropped after that. So great opportunity to show that, yeah, putting our soybeans early and benefiting canola with warmer soils afterwards is probably a better, or maybe the better way to go about the rotation. Yeah. Jeanette, that kind of leads into what you were going to say about canola and the benefits of maybe waiting a little bit to plant our canola. Absolutely. So we're not going to throw away the soil thermometer, even though maybe we don't need them as much for soybeans. Completely agree with Jason. Um, Out west, we actually do find that people have uh, more or less swapped soybeans with canola. And the reason is, not only does it benefit soybeans, as Jason talked about, but it benefits the canola as well. So we do find that, um, you know, although canola does Uh, manage cool soils well we definitely see the benefits especially when there's pest pressure like flea beetles to getting that canola out of the ground as quickly as possible so when we're seeding into warm soils we see that happen we get a nice stand we get a nice even emergence and really this is beneficial for the canola and we're doing good to our soybeans as well. Yeah, you just have that much more plant material that the that the flea beetles need to chew through as well, or or for the plants to grow through it. Yeah. Absolutely, that's that's the plan, right? Yeah. <laughs> Jason, back with with soybeans. What about later in the growing season in terms of extending that flowering period? We look at some of the yields that they get in Ontario or in the U.S. Some of that has to do with the length of the flowering period. Planting earlier does that help with that? Yeah, so the idea, I think, and that's been proven by uh, Horse Bonner there in uh, Ontario and and Omafra, is that um, the planting earlier, what you're trying to do is get your soybeans up and growing in the longest part, the longest days of the year. So that June 21st, that summer solstice, by doing that, you're encouraging a lot more nodes, getting hot, you know, bigger plants, but also getting those nodes produced. Because what we're finding is it's not just about um, pods per node and seeds per pod, that type of thing, but we need to have that. A number, the right number of nodes per acre. And what they've been finding is that optimum number is about 2 million nodes per acre. So let's say if your final stand is 150,000 plants per acre, you want to be in that 13 nodes per plant kind of average number. So from that, we have a really good starting point that would def- definitely then help with more flowers being produced for all those nodes in the right time of year. Yeah. Finally then, I forgot to mention, today is May the 4th, and Jason's other title is Jedi Agronomist. <laughs> Got it. May the 4th, though. Be with you. Yeah, May the 4th be with you. Exactly, Jeanette. Uh, would you be okay with planting soybeans on May the 4th, though, Jason? 
Is right. that too early? No, it's not. Not in my opinion. If the, like I said, like we just talked about today, if uh, we knew the soil temperature was warm enough, and they knew that the trend for the next few days was going to be warmer temps, no real cold weather, I'd be putting them in now. So once we have that first 24, 48 hours of warm water imbibing that seed, after that, it's okay. It's going to grow through it. So the only other issue that would be for planting soys earlier is that the only other critical period will be when that hook or that hypocotyl hook comes out of the ground. If we get a hard killing frost then, that's probably the most sensitive state it's in versus when it's up, the yield foliates are out and the first trifoliate is exposed, then it can tolerate a little bit more frost than even canola. Okay. And that's because that, that hook stage is just so vulnerable, it's so much yeah. high water content, I guess. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right, well, may the 4th be with you both. Jason and Jeanette. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> Perfect. Awesome. I think that's good.